so good evening everyone a very warm welcome to 162nd edition we have completed 70000 participants till now and a very important topic today use of psychotropics in pregnancy has been discussed before on various fora but still there is a scope for improvement and we have a very very uh, uh, dear friend and a learned speaker for today next slide please uh, i'm handing over the session to professor dr tofan pati sir sir is the chairman of this program he is from katak sir apologies not reading your cv and just handing it over to you no apology needed let me continue in the same spirit uh, next slide please first first amusing webinar we have got two favorite moderators i always use this our word because i don't find any other adjectives suitable professor dr amrit patil joshi professor of psychiatry high tech medical college president of ips odisha state branch and security eastern zonal branch ex council member of ips and the next one is dr alim patil alim siddiqui next slide please he is professor of psychiatry now in iras lucknow medical college and current treasurer of ips and ex like council member and he has got many portfolios as you see and with this He is the co-author of this presentation, as was told by Shobhi a minute, few minutes ago. Welcome, Dr. Siddiqui. Now I have got pleasure to introduce our chairpersons. Next slide, please. Dr. Tathagat Mahintamani from Tejpur, Assam. He is Assistant Professor of Tejpur Medical College. He has done his DPM from CIP Ranchi. He is an MD from Amritsar DM Diabetes and Psychiatry. and pjm air chandigarh student welcome dr tathagat will be rewarded by your kind presence and rich reports next dr khatir materia from ahmedabad is md in psychiatry and dpm from djmc ahmedabad presentations in journal national and international conferences chapters in books got young psychiatry award at national level as well as at many awards in the state and zone taking several lectures among medicalists and professionals welcome dr khati and welcome dr tathagat from now on ours the meeting is yours please carry on shaman will introduce our speaker dr shobhit gar and the other will introduce the topic let us move on tathagat unmute yourself uh, am i audible Yes, you are audible. Ah, uh, good evening. Uh, uh, so today's uh, presenter is Dr. Shobhit Garg from Dehradun. Uh, Sir is uh, currently professor, Department of Psychiatry, Sri Mohant Indirish Hospital, uh, and is associate editor of Archives of Biological Psychiatry and president elect of. the malayan psychiatric society uh, and <clears throat> chief person of neuromodulation committee ips uh, sir has many accolades in his uh, crown and uh, sir's area of interest is bipolar disorder and uh, brain stimulation uh, sir has published uh, multiple uh, sir has multiple publications in both national as well as international journals and 18 book chapters and many awards uh, and or uh, but the, actually sir doesn't need any introduction <laughs> ma'am please ma'am you are muted Uh, ma'am you are unmute now yeah you can go yeah ahead. yeah okay so a very good evening to one and all present here uh, thank you very very much uh, tukhan patti sir and my friends dr alim and dr amrit for giving me the opportunity to chair this important and a very relevant session of prescribing psychotropics during pregnancy now pregnancy and psychiatric illness that is a very very 
a complicated thing and considering giving a psychotropic medication in a patient who is pregnant is always a skillful thing. There are risks and benefits to consider while taking psychotropics during pregnancy. Concerns are regarding the long-term neurodevelopmental consequences of prenatal exposure to psychotropic meds. So on one hand, psychiatric illnesses during pregnancy are themselves associated with risks for a broad range of negative child outcomes. And on the other hand, many of the psychotropic meds themselves may show teratogenicity and are contraindicated in pregnancy. So the usual dictum is avoiding meds in the first trimester, that is the period of organogenesis, unless the benefits outweigh the risks. So I would like to say that the use of psychotropics during pregnancy is not only science, but also an art which of tailoring the treatment regimen according to the specific needs of patient. So without taking more time, I'm looking forward to our expert, Dr. Shobit Garg, sir, to enlighten us in this topic. Uh, thank you. Dr. Tathagat, any remark you would like to make? Uh, no, no, sir. Okay. Shobit, please proceed. Yes. Can I? Sure, yes. Can I share my slides? Good. So, my, my, my slides are visible and I'm, am I clearly audible? You are audible, your slides are visible and you are also visible. Kind oh, thank, you. You. thank you, sir. So, I think with the outset, I would like to first thank the organizers to give this opportunity to speak in such an August forum. It's very anxiety-provoking forum to speak on. And as Dr. Khyali has very wonderfully summarized and set the context, so, uh, and also my regards to Dr. Aleem, sir, because he, uh, and myself and him made this presentation together uh, in an, another platform. So, we are presenting this in this platform uh, with some modifications. So, I'm sure that uh, most of us, we, when we deal with female uh, uh, females with psychiatric disorders and then they come up with pregnancy card test positive. So, it throws us also in a lot of emotional state because sudden... Uh, spur of the decisions have to be taken up. So a clarity in that sense has to be uh, ensured because if we are not clear, our decisions might not be clear and then there might be some uh, scope for errors. So my disclosures are that this is a narrative uh, review. It's not a thorough review. Some conclusions are oversimplistic. I'm not an expert in perinatal psychiatry. So this is what uh, a review, what it meant. And this is not my uh, a projection of my some personal work. There is no industry support. And anyone after the presentation would want to start or some uh, initiate any treatment. Uh, it's a request that please kindly go to with the various databases, which I'll be sharing at the end of the presentation and subsequently uh, applying it to the clinical context. So with this, uh, I'll start with a very, this is very important picture of Focomelia. And uh, by when this uh, uh, contagion for it was distributed in the market, that is thalidomide. This was somewhere in around 1960s. And <clears throat> with this, and, and counterintuitively, in context of this presentation, this thalidomide was used as an anxiolytic and used to, used to calm patients down. And it was given in pregnancy. And 10,000 children were diagnosed, subsequently developed this focomelia. Then they actually build it up that, no, it has to be regulated. Any drug cannot come into the market and can be given in pregnancy. So subsequently, first category of drug was by Sweden uh, in nine, around 1976. So they made this A, B, C, D category, which was subsequently one year later was mimicked by US. They don't want to fall behind. And then they actually, 1979, they build up this ABCDX criteria, which we are following till date. So it's such an old classification. 10 years later on, Australian almost mimicked uh, and they brought their own classificatory system. So with this history, my two uh, statements or opening remarks would be, there is no health without adequate perinatal mental health. And most importantly, pregnancy is not productive against mental illness as in popular notion, maybe countrywide. Now, why we are having this presentation? Because 50% of the pregnancies usually are unplanned. And let me tell you, the figure inflates if you are taking into context severe mental disorders. And one in 10 
uh, females have psychotropics. They are actually having using psychotropics uh, just just before uh, the conception. And untreated mental illness, as Dr. Khyaldi uh, said, that in pregnancy, it itself can lead into congenital malformations, spontaneous abortions, NICU admissions, low birth weight, and prematurity. So this is the data. I'll not go into the detail, but psychiatric disorders have established consequences, uh, which are uh, uh, the, the perinatal uh, uh, consequences. And also associated poor factors like poor nutrition, substance use disorders, diabetes, mellitus, and or other metabolic concerns are there either due to psychotropics or without psychotropics in pregnancy leading to these adverse outcomes. So this everything has to be taken into a coherent context before deciding on what is beneficial for the patient and what is not. Now a very famous good line which I thought that uh, it's very eye-catching is last therapeutic orphan. Is pregnancy a last therapeutic orphan? Yes, perinatal period. Why? Because there are lack of RCTs citing ethical concerns. So, for example, you know, because of ethical concerns, you cannot have a severe depression patient in pregnancy will be given uh, a treatment or maybe an antidepressant versus an, a placebo. So, this kind of an uh, context, an ethical context comes in pregnancy. So, because of which most of the sense is made out, out of this observational data, uh, the, the studies. Now, uh, these the the this these uh, uh, data around this perinatal mental health and psychotropics it suffers from a lot of issues. First is causality issue. This was a very popular, very interesting pic shared in WhatsApp WhatsApp groups. Like correlation uh, or association is not a causation. So that is important because we have a lot of associations of a lot of side effects with psychotropics, but that doesn't mean that this is causality. Second important issue is. This 3% uh, risk factor, this is a background risk that 3% of congenital malformations are seen in general population. So if some drug has to uh, be implicated for any congenital malformation, it has to over uh, do this 3% uh, data. So, you know, there was a, re a recent paper which said that 1000 trimesters, first trimesters exposure to a drug is needed in order to actually have a power to predict the congenital malformation and that kind of a huge voluminous data is is uh, not available or it's not studied and associated confounding factors like number of the parity or an age or uh, associated medications associated comorbidities metabolic issues so on and so forth now coming to pregnancy per se what happens to the pharmacokinetics in pregnancy so we know that absorption because of delayed gastric emptying there is a less absorption there is an increased renal clearance. So there is an increased excretion of the drugs. The distribution, volume of distribution would increase because of lower albumin levels, high lipophilicity because of most of the psychotropics are lipophilic drugs and low peak plasma concentration. Now metabolism is a little interesting because metabolism, progesterone, uh, this is a chronic progesteronic state. So progesterone would induce CYP3A4 coenzyme, uh, Q, coenzyme and uh, uh, a cytochrome uh, enzyme, which actually, like for example, Q-tipin is metabolized by that. And it would induce 2D6. 26 psychotropics are metabolized by 2D6. So example is paroxetine and 2A6. But progesterone would inhibit CYP1A2, 2619. So we know clozapine also is metabolized by these enzymes. So uh, so the, my point is, ki, uh, the, the, so there is a variation in metabolism depending upon uh, ultimately whether someone is a poor metabolizer, intermediate, extensive or ultra rapid metabolizer, which is difficult to uh, establish clinically. Now, uh, this, this is all about uh, pregnancy. What are the pharmacokinetic changes which happens? Now, it also depends upon placental transfer of the psychotropics. So placental tra transfer depends upon the lipophilicity of the drug. Most of the psychotropics are lipophilic. So they will passively diffuse across the placenta. Uh, pH gradient across the placenta. Most of our psychotropics are weak bases. So they will actually uh, diffuse down the pH gradient. And drug protein binding characteristics. I have put an example of levetiracetam. It's a highly protein bound drug. So what happens? It doesn't diffuse into uh, the other side of the boundary. So that is why levetiracetam in epilepsy is safer in, in, in context of uh, uh, epilepsy. Uh, but when we compare it to valproate, valproate is definitely not safer because of, again, it is not that highly protein bound. 
also the other two factors are fetal distribution like pro low protein binding high free fraction and high brain uh, blood brain barrier permeability because of which there is a higher exposure of psychotropics whatever it reaches to the uh, fetal circulation and elimination of the drug because immature hepatic metabolism is there till 3 three months postnatally now uh, apart from this this is a very important issue of p glycoprotein this is abc kind of a protein which is uh, or also known as mdr protein its role is to pump drug out of the cells now i'll not go into the other three details placenta also has p glycoprotein and cutepin is a very strong uh, kind of a substrate for p glycoprotein so that is why cutepin has one of the lowest placental transfer rates that is why it is one of the safest ones here now as uh, one of the chairpersons uh, spoke about the period of gestation i'll just go through quickly there is all or none period with which is lasting for 8 to 10 days if some insult happens in this period then there is there won't be any conception or about uh, there will be uh, no conception then organogenesis phase which is still 60 days or around uh, 7 to 8 weeks and this is known as post conception phase if some insult happens in this phase there will be structural defects and subsequently after 60 days till term is known as fetal period so if any insult happens in this phase there will be functional defects or size defects so this is very very uh, basic thing now few uh, general principles of if we want to plan uh, ahead uh, for a pregnancy in a uh, women with psychiatric disorders so it should start six at least six months before attempting pregnancy all medication should be done before pregnancy if possible because then it becomes a knee jerk reaction and then there can be unpredictability leading to worsening of the patient ideally the patient should be stable psychiatrically before attempting pregnancy that is again 6 months duration and we have to address very importantly because this is something which doesn't come in the reflex so substance use disorders uh, which is uh, pretty common now minimizing the number of exposures for the baby including exposure to the psychiatric illness this is a very very important point so minimizing uh, exposure Uh, is also psychiatric exposure minimizing the number and dose of medications as far as possible but please avoid sub therapeutic doses of medications so then chances of relapse might be higher then use medications that something is known about old is usually better so old is gold kind of a thing applies here because one of the reasons they have said that newer drugs like recently you know a lot of newer drugs have come up there, there is a window period of 6 to 9 years of gap before you get in uh, data regarding its safety in pregnancy and lactation now we all know this category as i mentioned in previous slide the category a b c d a is absolutely safe drug and x is the drug which should not be given and b c d are in spectrum in between that most of the psychotropics fall into this category c category d but remember remember pregnancy category mean uh, b doesn't mean that it is Uh, safer than uh, c so this is very very important because again insufficient uh, human studies are also found in category b now in order to plan an uh, uh, treatment for subsequent pregnancy we should see that okay pregnancy going through the pregnancy is one of the hurdles we should also keep in mind that lactation is a second hurdle which should be crossed which should be taken care of if possible they can be present and each of the drugs like most of the people who are who are having doubts got cleared now there are <clears throat> many questions that we can see in the chat box so alim and amrit what like uh, should we read out the questions and or should we yeah, ask them to uh, yeah. ma'am you you and tathagat can take up the question <laughs> <laughs> yeah so tathagat you can start reading out the questions yes uh dr lal chand has asked what about the use of acetalopram uh yes acetalopram is considered pretty safe now uh the data is very good in context of ocd so they say that sertraline and acetalopram can be vividly used in ocd so acetalopram is also uh considered safe now yes in in cultures of ocd i could found that there were recommendations probably he got uh, confused regarding your mention of citalopram 
and he has asked about the city of Prague <coughs> specifically. Dr. Abhishek is asking Petyapin for insomnia. Your comments on that, sir? Uh, see, insomnia, it's an uh, off label uh, drug, what we'll say. Because here we are talking about that uh, drugs which are actually having an FDA approval and to be extrapolated in pregnancy. In any case, in insomnia, there is no <clears throat> studies which have been done. But we are using Qtipin as an off-label option, as a part of second generation antipsychotics, lower doses, you know, to provide benefit in insomnia. And it is so very well recommended in bipolarity uh, or in psychosis. So it becomes in common sense and very interesting, good choice, I would say, in insomnia. Yes, you are right. But uh, I was pre my presentation was in context of the established uh, the evidences. And along with that, I was trying to over uh, give the conclusion. That is why. But definitely, q in regarding the safety profile can be used in insomnia. Insomnia in context of primary insomnia disorder, I'll say. But it is not very well tolerated. That is the issue. And regarding quetiapin only, Dr. Nupur is asking, can we upright it quetiapin like in normal scenarios? Yes, yes. So that depends upon uh, the, the, the individual tolerability profile. So a lot of patients in Himalayan region here, they will tolerate very low dosages. So quetiapin, we were, might go to 100, 150. But uh, maybe it depends upon an individual to individual basis. The symptoms are there. You can actually gradually titrate it. But then you have to avoid mega dosages. Whatever is in therapeutic dose for that clinical condition, that needs to be used. Definitely. Dr. Ahmed has asked, higher and frequent doses of lorazepam in pregnancy in what context? Because see, ultimately, uh, well, benzodiazepines will be using in context of anxiety uh, or comorbid anxiety in other disorders and in context of insomnia. So in any ways, the recommendations are that you have to use it intermittently, not regularly, not continuously for months together. So whatever uh, brings the therapeutic benefit to the patient, the doses need to be taken uh, in that uh, to the therapeutic level. But what is a capping of dose ki can, can be given till 4 milligram, 6 milligram? I will have to look into it. So for possibly lower dosages, the 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 more frequent the dose is, the better it is. Because you'll actually you'll actually uh, the higher the, the dose, the higher the peak <coughs> level should be avoided in pregnancy. So better it is ki if you are giving more frequent dosages. So we are actually avoiding the huge peaks. So that can be in that that can be the more suggestible method. Dr. Ramala is asking about the use of fluoxamine in pregnancy. So uh, yes, interesting. I was trying to look into it. Uh, generally, when uh, it, it is not preferred because it is the data is relatively lesser when we compare it to sertraline or acetylopram, uh, peroxidin because peroxidin was more of mislabeled. I I suppose. But fluoxamine definitely we can use, but the data base is not uh, robust enough to actually ensure an uh, recommendation. That is why in, if you see pregnancy uh, uh, recommendations in OCD, there also fluoxamine is not recommended. But doesn't mean that it should not be. <laughs> so absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Now there is an interesting question from Dr. Ashwin. The mechanism of action of suspected adverse effects are not elaborated. What is described is the effects, but not reasons for the same or the lack of reasons. Your comments on that, sir, if the question is clear. And the question is also interesting, uh, Dr. Ashwin. Uh, so, so, actually, the reasons probably... Uh, Shabit, not... Shabit, I think... Yes, sir. Uh, show with actually uh, that the presentation was more on the clinical use of uh, yes, uh, psychotropics in pregnancy. So yes, this will be a rather dif a different uh, seminar in itself. If we go into the mechanism, yes, sir. Okay, so so uh, this is uh, this was not the scope of presentation actually. Okay, so we leave that question for some other webinar. 
So we move on to the next question by Dr. Mohan. Yeah, I think I think that question would be better answered by uh, Bhaskar in a webinar. <laughs> Okay, so if a patient is on lithium during pregnancy, which is relatively safer mood stabilizer, but during lactation, it is said that its RID is higher, more chance of toxicity in case of dehydration in baby. What's your experience of use of lithium in postpartum period? See, that is a right concern because lithium, because of its maternal, the, the levels in fetal, uh, in, in newborn can be uh, even 30 to 40 percent of the levels in mother so and because of it <laughs> is water soluble so it it, it 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 runs in breast compartment or milk compartment and then it can attain higher levels but uh, people have actually said mother, but but it's not contraindicated in breastfeeding so it, there are exceptions there, there, there are situations scenarios where lithium can be given if needed that is the only drug of choice but again you need close monitoring so monitoring of the fetal uh, uh, kidney profile or the fetal thyroid profile and with a close uh, in it lies in within pediatrician. So so in that context, uh, it becomes a tricky situation. But to be on the safer side, I'll still say that in lactation, we'll try to avoid it. So that is one of the reasons where lithium, if we cannot run it through the course, that is why I didn't mention lithium in my last slide, in the second bus last slide. That it will not run the whole course because in to give it in uh, lactation will be very tricky. People have reported it. People have reported that the, the concerns are very high, but side effects on the ground were not that much. But still, uh, being a clinician, I'll not. I'll, I'll try to avoid it. Tathagas, more. Another question by Dr. Ashwin. How much of these recommendations are due to legal issues and not due to scientific evidence? How much of these are due to? These recommendations are due to legal issues and not due to scientific evidence. More... I think it is more of, uh, Shabit, I think it is more of due to uh -huh. lack of scientific evidence. The most important thing exactly. is the lack of scientific evidence. It's... Uh, we don't any answer in this topic should start there is lack of evidence we cannot say for sure we need more data after that we start answering the question so it is the lack of scientific evidence and of, obviously because of these legal tangles that the our profession is in right now so uh, to avoid these legal hassle we should always try to uh, stick as close to the guidelines as to close to the accepted parameters so yes uh, both parts are true, partly due to legal issues and uh, mostly due to lack of scientific evidence. And uh, Dr. Mohita on lithium again went to hold lithium before delivery and then went to restart. Nini, if, if you're trying to hold lithium before delivery, uh, why we are doing so? Whether we don't want ki leave the patient, the, the uh, patient should have a pregnancy with lithium so we have to actually hold it six months before or an year before and then subsequently plan an alternative mood stabilizer or an alternative anti meaning agent and give uh, a run of six months because if there are even subsyndromal symptoms then it becomes difficult because pregnancy it is little unpredictable so any uh, exacerbations of pregnancy can be difficult and you land up in giving more psychotropics than actually preventing yourself And Dr. Abhishek is asking the same question for all psychiatry drugs in pregnancy. For all psychiatry drugs, when to hold? Again, uh, probably I think that's so what that he. That I did. mentioned in the slide that when when we plan for uh, planned pregnancies, so if we want to take off psychotropics, so we have to do it and at least <laughs> six, six months to an year, minimum six months before the actually uh, the play, the planning should start. And again, it can be and cannot be an abrupt stoppage. So it has to be again a slow taper. So whatever that that time window you need with these patients, otherwise the risk of relapse might increase. So you plan for pregnancy, and then there is a relapse standing up. Pregnancy in itself will bring its psychosocial stressors, mind you. So that can actually induce a relapse. 
so you have to be very very careful i will say more generous be be careful by one year of age one year before conceiving it was very pertinent question because this is this is the scenario which we face with the patients yes tathagat doctor pillai ji catatonia in pregnancy can we use higher and frequent doses of lorazepam again it is not uh, studied lorazepam per se uh, lorazepam uh, its efficacy in catatonia in pregnancy this phenomena that we don't have any data so it the your guess is as good as my guess in this uh, uh, clinical scenario Uh, Dr. Abhishek has asked again, what to do in case of mild depression in a place where patient is not willing to come for come timely for counseling? A very uh, tricky thing, and if patient is having a depressive disorder that is causing dysfunction and not amenable for therapy, then go with safest psychotropic sertraline. Um, I'll start with sertraline because that can be continued post. Postpartum also, but postpartum phase also. Uh, somebody has requested to provide the slides. Yes, sure. And, uh, Dr. Ashik is asking the safety of amitriptyline in pregnancy, and someone also try try hexafenidine in pregnancy. So both regarding both the drugs. So. Uh... So, amitriptyline is an interesting. Uh, it's it's one of the safest TCAs, as I mentioned. Uh, Trihexafenidyl, it becomes a little tricky because it's an again a category C drug, so a category C psychotropic. So we'll have to use our jurisdiction. If there is patient is having lesser risk of extrapyramidal, is already having as per recommendations four months of extrapyramidal. Uh, sorry, trihexafenidyl uh, usage. So you can actually plan to uh, start tapering it off, and then uh, take the patients without trihexafenidyl. And this can be done pre-pregnancy. So whether if it is psychotropic, uh, uh, category C psychotropic, uh, also. So why to actually uh, expose the pregnancy? So we have to go for minimum exposure. So that can plan can be taken up before the uh, pre-pregnancy planning. Issue will arise if it's an accidental pregnancy. Yes. Uh, there are many compliments also, sir, for the presentation. Also, someone has asked to put it on the YouTube. And I think Alim, regularly the YouTube uploading will be taking place, right? Yeah, yeah, we are doing it. Yeah. So, is there any guideline to hold breastfeeding for few hours following drug intake by Dr. Soham? Yeah, it's an interesting question. So, uh, holding breastfeeding, I mentioned those four or five scenarios where breastfeeding should not be recommended. That in context of close-up in polypharmacy, preterm birth, and one or two more clinical situations. But uh, immediate release drug. So, immediate release drug uh, can be... Uh, so, so, immediately release drug can be immediately given after uh, the baby is being fed. Or before the longest sleep period so you can clog the infant's sleep time and then longest sleep period can be dosed before that so these are two small things which might make uh, uh, the exposure of the baby to the psychotropic little less then Another what your question is any uh, what you upsetting no. probably you have answered it in your presentation itself it is a again, new drug again, again new drug New drugs <laughs> to avoid because, as I said, it takes six years to nine years for this data to come up, to, to, for consolidated data to come up regarding their safety. So new drugs needs to be avoided in pregnancy and lactation. Sir, ECT. ECT is safer. I think ECT is associated with very trivial kind of an effects. Again, I'll say confounding by indication, but ECT is one of the safest Agents, we we all have used ECT in pregnancy. I've just given ECT in pregnancy in thirty in just preterm, thirty fifth, thirty sixth week, and then the it was pretty safe, uh, individually and uh, theoretically also. Uh, Oxcarbazepin, versus Ritalin. Uh, Oxcarbazepin versus lithium in terms of teratogenic risk. 
so i'll say oxybiz it is favorable in terms of uh, teratogenic risk because lithium the whole studies uh, whole that story started with that uh, epstein anomaly and subsequently it was found that it is not that highly reported which it was there and uh, then subsequently uh, uh, the meta analysis and the other data came up in support of the lithium but when we compare it with that phobia in mind i'll still say oxybiz it is safer रिकमेंडेशन Off label use of promethazine for insomnia in pregnancy. Yes, a good choice, I will say. So, phenargan is safer in pregnancy and very good choice. If patient would tolerate it, patient uh, will not have any nutritional issue because it's an it has a lot of anticholinergic. Uh, pro, it's a high anticholinergic profile, which because mostly iron deficiency is associated with females in pregnancy, it can worsen. It can create induce restless leg syndromes kind of a picture. If that is not an issue, it's a good agent, I suppose. Uh, Doctor Santosh has asked a question. Sir, one scenario: bipolar in acute phase during pregnancy started antipsychotic, postpartum and in maintenance phase. Can we continue antipsychotic or change to mood stabilizer? Can you repeat the question, Sathagar? uh bipolar in acute phase during pregnancy right started antipsychotic mm. postpartum and in maintenance phase can we continue antipsychotic or, or change to mood stabilizer why why the anti psychotics are antimanic agents so they have an uh, therapeutic efficacy in acute phase and maintenance phase olanzapine and quetiapine are known as 4 by 4 drugs so they are efficacy in acute and maintenance phase in with both mania and phases <coughs> so why to if if things are fine then why to play around and as i said if some exposure has already taken up in pregnancy so that similar exposure will be much lesser in feeding so in in lactation so we it makes more sense that we continue with the same psychotropic if the side, associated side effects cannot be managed then we need to change it now endoxifen in pregnancy i think sir we have the same answer i hope that we have this data and answers to this but when we see the uh, most of the monographs or the data available in the net they say that no adequate data is available so no should not be given no adequate data so no data amenable for any conclusion so they say that please don't use it now again an interesting question if the patient is on sertralin or other ssris and planning for elective lhcs whether to stop ssris if yes then when considering pph in mind So PPH uh, already I said that PPH risk even with paroxetine was extrapolated. Subsequently, they couldn't establish it. So there is actually uh, I think minimal to uh, minute risks of this. So in so in order to consider that as an uh, absolute consequence, we'll stop certain and play with the homostasis, a uh, physical homostasis and uh, of the systemic homostasis will not be a good choice. So I'll continue with certain and we'll be probably hold it. For a day when oral drugs are not allowed. Roll off. Another <coughs> follow-up question is plant CS when when to hold. What what? Uh, plant LUCS when to hold in case why of hold? plant LUCS. Why to hold? To, why to hold? Okay, again, roll off ECT in pregnancy you have already mentioned, and roll off ECT in postpartum. Ah, so ECT again. If it is safe in pregnancy, so what will deteriorate in postpartum? So it is hmm. very safe. RTMS is very safe. RTMS is very safe. So uh, it's very safe in pregnancy. Contrary to what people think, neuro stimulation, neuro modulation is a very good option for uh, uh, common mental disorders. 
it can be a very very interesting option later on role of lonenserin or peliperidone i think for peliperidone there might be question, having i think anticipating this question uh, see bolanserin is a japanese drug so i if if by luck it would have been an us baby so i think you would have had a huge number of data and monographs associated with it there is no data of bolanserin in pregnancy so we are trying to tease it out there was there is it's surprising peliperidone the data is scarce you know so uh, but but being a metabolite of uh, uh, risperidone it should be safer to use but i think if given a choice i'll use risperidone than peliperidone uh this question also i think partly has been answered is there any recommendation regarding timing between drug intake and breastfeeding uh, so that is i think i've answered if yeah, it's a yes. instant release drug so preferably if you use instant release drug it will be very easy to dose and time as per the uh, feeding times क्वेश्चन Uh, our experience is not there you know but uh, they say that I mean methylphenidate uh, and amphetamines they are category c but no personal experience you know uh, so i'll still say that if it is given for attentional deficit so if it is severe then you have to weigh the risk and benefit of them but if it avoid it takes care of the other risk factors like substance use where in this attentional deficit or it takes care of the impulsivity high risk behaviors are less then probably we can use both of them or either of them yes yeah, so there is a question by dr imran ali shiv ji what yes, is sir. more harmful to the fetus relapse in maternal mental health secondary to withdrawal of psychotropic medication or continuing of medication so that is the whole gamut of uh, the data uh, the the evidence but i, I think state, that, that is the summary of your presentation what hey, to take my message hai ki ha so is dar se hum dawai na band kare ki dawai started the presentation with that thing only ki relapse jo hoga wo zyada nuksan de raha hai de raha hai most probably kyunki usko establish karne ke liye rcd chahiye ya control trial chahiye jo hai nahi sir Okay, one question: How safe is it to continue dosulapine in pregnancy? I think it is a category A drug, so it can be given uh, doxylamine, right? Doxylamine. No, no, no. Dosulapine. 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 Would be C. It's probably it's category C. Category. C. So again, uh, if you're using for insomnia, so if you can use it for uh, specific required period of time, it will be better. I think अगर हमें देना पड़ रहा है तो it is better that we use doxylamine, which is given for hyperemesis, and that's a better. It's again uh, its properties resembles TCA. It's closer to TCA pharmac pharmacokinetic wise. So I think we can use that. I think we have covered most of the question. No. Yes, I yes we have. Yeah, yeah. So Shobhit, uh, I think. Uh, the question by dr imran uh, probably the psychotropics in pregnancy are too maligned too much bad press too much bad press sir. yes sir yes because that so, is a so yes yeah yeah please carry on uh, that is a take home message sir ki we are uh, we have been primed in our post graduation as a psychiatrist we are first to uh, bad mouth psychotropics because that kind of a projection is being given uh, the whole list of data which we see but when we closely look into the quality subsequent meta analysis we key psychiatric disorders should be maligned not the psychotropics yes uh, just so, yeah yeah please ma'am please ma please ma'am go ahead yeah just a comment as well as a question sir 
uh, now being in private practice, I advise the patient for like counsel the patient for pregnancy and to withdraw the psychotropic drug before that or uh, when they declare I tend to taper that and all those things. Uh, now, just uh, talking in a bit casual, non-scientific way, when I used to be in the, like during my PG or even in hospital for mental health, where there were so many patients coming from rural area were not educated like instead of two to three months they may come after five months follow up after five months during which they may be two to three months pregnant and even they don't know so we continue the medicines as maintenance and after two three months again they come and tell that they are pregnant already four or five months so now there is no question of even of stopping and there were so many such patients and in most of them, or rather, I think in my experience, all of them, uh, nobody had any problem with the child. So practically, I would like to ask you and even the other uh, clinicians, like, have you seen congenital animal anomalies or any problem happening in the child? In my private, I'm always very cautious. So I haven't come across any side effect on the child due to the use of psychotropic in pregnancy. I'll still say that you're right because ignorance is bliss. I think probably a lot of patients from rural areas, they'll come after delivery and continuing medication. <laughs> you know, two to three yeah. weeks and they'll bring with, they'll come with their kid and we're so surprised that nothing was reported, nothing has happened and uh, no preconcept, preconceptual planning it, it, uh, took place. But I suppose this should, I hope that this is a scenario with uh, in, in other clinical context also. But has anyone come across the side effects uh, practically i think audience among audience people can contribute if they have their uh, experience of seeing a cleft palate or an epstein anomaly i think one one patient i had uh, who had a, a neural tube defect uh, some patients might or ha be having missed abortions we we do not come to know that could be one thing uh, but what i'd say uh, I have seen hundreds of patients who have been doing too well. As ma'am said, they were on pregnancy, even on valproate, even on valproate, on carbamazepine. They they went, they had pregnancy, and they came back with beautiful babies. So yes. uh, I think I think we are too alarmed to use. Uh, uh, too much knee jerk reaction is there. If you, whenever you are talking of pregnancy, first stop the psychotropic. Yes, but we have to measure. Yeah, we have to measure that you, you should not rock the boat. A system that is stabilized on uh, antidepressants or antipsychotics, you have to take care that you are rocking the boat. Would that be more harmful or would the side effects be more harmful? Okay, so uh, I think I think uh, we should have a more positive outlook, less nihilistic towards our medication. Yes, you will. Yes, sir. That is what we discussed. Me and Dr. Aleem sir were discussing before the presentation. That we will give also a disclosure that after this presentation, don't jump. Read every drug. Go into the databases. Use your own jurisdiction, and subsequently, uh, psychoeducate your uh, uh, patients and also gynecologists, which are very important uh, obstetricians, which are very very important vital cogs in the team. Because for most of them, every psychotropic is single entity and they are uh, equally harmful. And they're poisonous. Well, Dr. Sobit, yes, the situation which uh, Dr. Khati raised, and I also feel that we have not got so much of abnormal. I have seen many cases with cardiac defects, but I am not sure whether I can attribute it to use of the drugs. I have a patient has been taking what happens the most not one of the most notorious drugs is sodium hyaluronate, and that is a common choice of treatment of epilepsy, which is given in the peripheral places, and it is continued on and on. How many really pregnant people undergo the testing at the three or four weeks, twenty weeks, and twenty four weeks intervals which is prescribed, and in how many centers it's available? I am telling you the where we stand today. A few months ago, we had a declaration in the parliament that we have 854 doctors per 10,000 population. And we are very glad because 
global statistic is 1000. If you go through the data, you see 70% of the people stay in villages and 30% in urban and semi-urban areas. And doctors, 69% are in urban areas and 31 in periphery. So this comes down, brings down the ratio. There, there is not only for psychiatry, we are talking of damage gaps. There is a health gap for everyone. So a patient is doing well, he will do well. I know patients who manage their children by giving benzodiazepines. In most of the places, it is an OTC track. No schedule, then nothing is available. People give it to the children and go for work. Where they're going to work is essential to give some bread to the children in childless distress. It will be my 44 years in psychiatry. I have seen patients being tied up to a coconut tree and being brought brunt for treatment after four months after the harvest season is over. Those are the realities. I do believe this scenario is very important. And whatever is the recommendation is on the basis of available evidence. And it is also influenced by the evidence that is awaited. And it is a legal weapon in our hand if we follow it. If anything happens, you can tell we have followed it. Because earlier patients are not that litigant. And nowadays they are more. And all of us who may see sing over the screen are dealing with persons who are likely to be litigant, but they are below they belong to the relatively more educated group. So licensing with the, the gynecologist becomes very important. One of the very, patient... guys, guys, the licensing and pediatrics are very important. Uh, it, extremely important. But, uh, one of the patients who was on close up in and subsequently would relapse frequently if close up in was tapered. She got pregnant, delivered, the baby was fine. Subsequently, she was in some other town. I actually talked to the treating gynecologist, uh, obstetrician, and said, Ki, ma'am, close up in is given for severe issue. If we try to taper it off, it will not be possible. She'll relapse back. It's a very sensitive phase for her. And it is not to be given in uh, breastfeeding. Kindly educate the family members. She actually educated the family members to hold feeding. And the issue was resolved amicably, sir. Yes, that's very good. I personally do. I have been doing it since uh, long, the beginning of my career. When FDA approvals come, I used to mention the risk categories. Risk category of this medicine is this. And the reference of this category is this. Because I, I, I am biased to the information. Some of the peripheral gynecologists may not be having the risk categories at hand with them. We are for the benefit of the patient. I always mention, but this dilemma occurs. People will come with having been taken uh, benzodiazepines over this, sodium valproate over this, and there will be many evidences they have taken and gone out with the, uh, their pregnancy, and we do not know that they are having any uh, neural tube defect. But the sub defect changes which they might be have had, leading to some disease. Aberration in the mental faculty that we do not judge, that we don't cause. And the other part of the story is that mother and child should be close. The kangaroo mother concept tells only that. Dr. Asavani is from your place, Dr. Metalia. Yes, sir. Pardon? Dr. Asavani, who has given okay. the, kangaroo, uh, the kangaroo mother concept to the world. Yeah. I had an interaction with her about 15 days ago. Okay. You know, in one, so this is important about for the protection of the child. One of should start from the fetal place, fetal period. We have to go for, but these conditions you have to keep in mind. So we anyway go for drugs, and it uh, we these are weapons. These recommendations we are weapons for us to safeguard us. In spite of all goodwill, we must be prepared for a notice someday. So, Thank you. So surprisingly, I had uh, two or three patients who whose mother-in-law, in another case, husband, they asked the gynecologist that 
we don't ask us to stop the medicine during pregnancy we are going to continue that because we know that when she gets off medication what is the condition so whatever happens to the child if there is any problem we'll abort it but we can't risk stopping the medicine and all of them after the delivery it was a healthy child in spite of being on four to five psychotropics which are contraindicated so yes that yeah that happens i yeah. i always believe what we have to record all our advices categorically in the prescription yes. that refer to gynecolo obstetrician for this reason this category is this do this and have to always mention that they have a choice Dilemma is there for us, for them, for everyone. To choose between the mother and the child is up to them. But Sovita has made a very, very, very best presentation. It was a learning of race. Excellent presentation, Sovita. Thank you, sir. And uh, chairpersons can have their final remarks. Then I shall take the role of uh, all three of us. Aleem and Amrit are in air. <laughs> no, sir, so, I'm still on ground. <laughs> oh, oh, still... you are, oh, you are here? <laughs> so, yes, I shall yes, take yes. Amrit's role and give a vote of thanks. Any yes, la yes. last minute remarks? Uh, no, sir. So just, just a thing that uh, I've already said this. Uh, use of psychotropics possibly should be continued. The The the, the the perceived harm is too much maximized, too much it is uh, being publicized. So, so I think keeping the mother safe is most important because probably the side effects of illness are much more than the side effects of medication. That is the gist that we got while we were going to the topic. Yes, so, that was the so, undergraduate. Yes, that was the undergraduate yes. teaching to us in the sixties. If you have to choose yeah. between the mother and the child, mother is first. Yeah, and by choosing mother, you're also choosing the child. By by just simply abruptly stopping the medication because you think they are bad, I think uh, you're not a good doctor. Thank you. Sir, over to you. Chairperson, uh, any over... concluding remarks? Dr. Tathagata, uh, Dr. Khati. Uh... No, it yes, was a wonderful yes, presentation. Uh, over to Tathagat. I think I have said enough. Uh, I have nothing to say. Uh, uh, Shohit Sir's presentation is <laughs> as brilliant as it, it has always been. Uh, uh, thank you, sir, for the wonderful presentation. Thank you. Oh, okay, I, I take over. <laughs> I am... Thankful to Dr. Sobit Gar for such a crisp presentation and very good presentation, quite elaborate, quite sweet and explanatory. And I am also thankful to Dr. Tathagat and Dr. Khati for nicely chairing the session and coordinating the discussion, taking up all questions. All the questions has been taken up. And uh, our moderators, Amrit, he, is, he has to leave because he has to go to a place. And I'm very much happy and special thanks to Dr. Lin this time. He is here till the end. Was Syed uh, waiting in the airport? Yes, sir. I'm okay. at the airport now. Oh, compliments. Show much devoted <laughs> to the program. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all the participants, about 300 this time. And uh, thanks Tarent and team Thursday Musics, all other members. It's a nice evening. It's time to say good night. Have an enjoy. Till the next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you Shobhit. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Tathagar. Yeah. Thank you all and a goodbye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.